Tom's written a whole bunch of books, right? Faraway Places, The Man Who Fell in Love with the Moon, In the City of Shy Hunters, Now's the Hour. Uh, his new book, I Love You More, is coming out April 1st. That's not a joke, it's actually coming out on the day. Yes. Check this out, so he doesn't have to do it, I'm gonna shill for him. If you wanna get that shit now, just go to hawthornbooks.com, yeah. you can order it, it'll show up in your mailbox a couple days later. You yes. don't have to wait until Already April 1st. stage presence because <laughs> I'm such a scared little boy and uh, I've got this book tour to do and I'm going to have to be standing up in front of people and, and talking about what I feel and what I think and why I think it and how I wrote it and, and uh, it's, it's, um, it's uh, daunting uh, because really the, the it's an amazing thing, really, that I'm even standing up here and speaking because of, um, you know, uh, how I was taught and not to, you know, not the way I was taught to be seen and not heard. And uh, every, really every word that comes out of me is uh, an act of heroism, I think, sometimes. And, um, and I hear that in you guys too often, and um, I'm just really proud to be a part of you guys. So thanks a lot. Wow. I'm reading from I Love You More, and um, um, it's on page 275. It's the first time you meet the female character, Ruth. It's in Portland, Oregon. Uh, you know, that place, um, in the late 90s, it's that night I have a gin and tonic, too, I smoke some reefer, too, weird, I'd completely forgotten what a funny fellow I can be. <laughs> of course you can't smoke reefer not have a cigarette. Before I know it, I'm completely stoned and I'm big man and there are so many people in the house it's hard to move. Most of the people are from my class. It's when my favorite song comes on, Gotta Give It Up, but I look around for someone to dance with. Ruth Dearden's been dancing all night, nonstop, as if the back patio was a place of magic. Sometimes alone, mostly with other women. Ruth is completely unselfconscious, and often the way she moves is quite dramatic. For a moment I think she's high, then I remember her husband. Ruth always leaves right after class. Most students hang out, have some wine. Usually someone lights a joint. Later on, Ruth will tell me it was because of that joint that she left early. She was afraid her husband would find out he'd make her stop class because there were drugs. At first I danced alone next to her. The last time I danced to this song was with Hank that night before we went to the spike. All around roof on the patio are puffs of chiffon that all night she's been, she's been tearing off her dress. The moment when Ruth sees that I'm close, she smiles way too big. I take her hands and we begin to dance. Jitterbugging, I guess you'd call it. My sister taught me the steps when I was in the fourth grade and I've been doing them ever since. Modified the steps with Beth Kodobushka for the disco years. Oh my God, Ruth says, my teacher is dancing with me and it's in his long johns. Some women just know how to follow. 
Don't ask me how they do it. I can't do it. Ginger Rogers as good as Fred Astaire, only Ginger did it backwards and in my heels. <laughs> Some women root things. As soon as I touch her hands and begin dancing with her, the unselfconsciousness, dramatic dance, the unselfconscious, dramatic dancer that was Ruth Dearden all of a sudden loses her rhythm. It's like she isn't listening to the music at all. She actually begins to clown, throwing her arms and legs around. I'm surprised she makes fun of herself like this. Then in a moment, I get it. Ruth Dearden has a propinquity problem. I quit, let, I quit let go of Ruth's hands and we dance together without touching. On her chest, just above the chiffon bodice of her white dress, her skin flushes scarlet. Ruth knows her skin is doing that, so she puts her hand to her throat. She's looking for something to say, anything, so she says, Happy birthday. You look like you're having a good time, I say. My husband isn't here, she said. <laughs> Your dress is falling apart. I'm ripping it apart. It's my wedding dress, she says. I've always hated it. <laughs> the little girl's dress, she says, or a doll. So puppy and so first communion. I don't know what I was thinking. What I say next. You gotta be high to say shit like I say next. If you keep at it, I say, you'll be like shingly shoesy. Ruth Dearden isn't as tall as me. She's barefoot, and I got two inches on her. She's not fat or plump, she's just big. By the time she meets Hank, she'll have lost 25 pounds. Her skin is that strawberry blonde that freckles. The flush, the flush still on her cheek. The flush still on her chest. Maybe a heat rash. Her hair is thick and red that hangs to her shoulders. Curly hair that won't frizz. I want to touch it because of the color and how it looks silky, and because I'm high. What did you, what did you say, she said. I have to stop because I'm laughing. That happened a lot with Ruth. There was a way so many times when we were together, I'd start laughing and not know how to stop, and the moment would expand and expand. I'd just suddenly find myself in a place I couldn't explain that was never ending, and I'd be laughing. Shingly shoozy, I'd say. It's a Betty Grable movie. Betty's singing and dancing on a stage in front of a red curtain, and there's a pocket in the curtain, and she steps inside the pocket and changes into a skimpier outfit. It's a game my sister and I play, I say. The way Ruth is looking at me, her big plastic glasses a little crooked, her bangs hanging down into her eyes, that asymmetrical jaw of hers and her mouth open, the flush is on her cheeks as well. I made up the word, I say, or my sister did. When I was five, I was so fascinated by Betty Grable's pocket and the curtain and her quick wardrobe change that I called it shingly shoesy. <laughs> shingly shoesy, Ruth says. My father hated it, I say. Betty Grable? No, I said, that I made up the word. <laughs> was it you that made it up, Ruth asks, or your sister? Men can't do that, you know. I say women are lucky that way. You you can step behind a curtain, change your outfit and your makeup, and voila, you step out a whole new woman. Jeez, Ruth said, wish I knew how to do that. That was the first time Ruth hit me, knocked me the fuck down. I mean, she didn't mean to. It's just at that moment Ruth decided to do one of her dramatic dance moves, <laughs> and she twirled with her arms and went arms came around, her fist hit me square in the face and knocked me down. <laughs> I put my hand to my nose, blood on my hand. Ben, Ruth says, I'm so sorry. She leans down and, and with a tuft that chiffon she's ripped from her dress, she goes to put the chiffon up to my bloody nose. HIV, I almost yell. Later on that night when the full moon is hanging above the chatter and the music of the party, I pass out the words to a song. It's an old song from the 30s. And what's a better thing to do on a cancerous birthday than sing to the moon? I turn the lights out and each person lights a candle and we gather close together in the backyard and we're all in white and we look up. The full moon up there in the dark night sky, a bright silver ball. 
The night is clear and warm and the moon feels close. How we, how we can see that it's a ball hanging up there. The craters on the surface, the way it shines is the way we all shine when we know we're being held. Blue moon, you saw me standing alone. Voices rising together in song. It can get me every time. All of a sudden, my body feels the bodies close around me. My birthday, my friends, my students, this new world in Portland, Oregon, the shine up there is shining just for me. The breath I take is another new breath, a breath without the constant fear. I heard somebody whisper, please adore me. And when I looked, the moon had turned to gold. It's on the refrain that I look around at the group of us mortals singing to the moon. We're all children, really. No wonder people sing to feel united. Each one of us alone in our body gives voice to a sound that goes up and out into the world. Our voice, our voice is joined by other voices and by some miracle what joins our voices out there and dives down into our throats and back to our hearts. When I hear it, <clears throat> one voice I can hear above the rest. It's not a strong singing voice. There's something fragile about it yet clear, determined. Ruth Dearden, a candle under her chin, her big plastic glasses, all the chiffon tufts of her dress torn off. Her head is tilted up. The way she's looking at the moon, somehow you just know all her dreams are going to come true. Wow. Wow.